Well, the old heat pump was sitting on this old pad right here, which is right up against the front of the house. I'd like to use the same disconnect, or at least the location, since the wire comes through the wall and the uh, penetration for the line set, but I'd like to set the heat pump back a little bit. That way, if you wanted to plant some bushes here on the corner of the house, you could without being right up against the heat pump. So, eventually this is all coming down, but I'm gonna try to get off this first section, try to get it out of the way so I can go ahead and get started, started on the heat pump. It's about time to sand the drywall in there and I'm gonna wait until I sand it before I put the coil in the actual indoor unit. But all it's holding this thing up right now, I got those two props under it back there and I've still got to saw this post the rest of the way into here. I've already cut it in two across through there and there's a seam you can see on the house there. So I've took all the bolts out, lag bolts, at least the ones I could find. Hopefully I won't pull the veneer off the house. So, I've got that excavator around there. I thought about bringing it around here and tying it to it, but basically I just want to get it down on the ground so I can saw it up into manageable pieces with a, you know, a circular saw. It's a lot easier. And uh, I just don't want to be standing on it when I'm doing it. So I'm going to see if I can get that sawed in two and maybe just give it a little tug this way and hopefully it'll just slide down those boards away from the house. We'll see what happens. She's down on the blade now, so I just took the blade out of the saw and I'm gonna give it a tug, see what happens. I must have forgot a few bolts. Let me see what I can do. One of them broke off. I don't, it broke off right at the edge of the thread, so I don't know if all those threads are holding it, but I may have to get something to pry with. She's just too heavy. I mean, it's, it's almost like this post is still together, even though it's not. I guess I'll go get the keys and Start up the excavator and see if I can reach up there and kind of persuade it to come on out here. I wish I knew I got all those legs out. Some of them were rusty and kind of wood colored. But at this point, I got to do something. If I'd have known I was going to have to use the excavator, I would have cut the poles off down near the ground. That way it could have tilted on over. So I'm not sure what this is going to do, but we'll find out. That post kind of bent over and I'm not sure where that one is. It's probably been over as well. So they had a bunch of these little lead shields. Some of them, there's that one that broke off. Got a little wood left on it. So I'd say it was holding it a little bit right there. But that'll be much nicer. Now I got a place to put my heat pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this thing up into some more manageable pieces started with the handrail out there I'll, I'll put it all on the dump trailer on a nice day and take it to the dump 
Okay, so there's my hole up through the floor. So what I did, I just, while I was outside, I went ahead and used my bender to uh, bend me a riser on that. And I didn't make it 90 degrees because I knew I'd be on top of this beam and I'd need to get under these joists before I take off over that way. I debated moving the unit over to the center of the house because it would be a straight line, but I measured it and it's three foot different as far as line set length. So I'm just gonna use the hole I've got. So I'm going to, uh, I just got this held up there so I could go upstairs and look at it. I'm going to uh, take my bender and bend me an angle heading over in that direction. And of course, I'm just using my, <laughs> my scrap copper for my job. So I'll get this headed that way. And I've got to put a port, uh, an actual Schrader, you know, port in this line in order to put a pressure switch on it for that zoning control in heat mode. It don't want to, uh, you know, this is your dis compressor discharge when you're in heat mode. So it don't want you to uh, turn off so much airflow that the pressure gets too high. So it's got a pressure switch that's got to go in this line. So I'll have a port inside. I can actually, uh, you know, stub me some three eighths up through there. I've got some of that on the van. Maybe not enough to make it, but enough to get up through there. And I might go ahead and do the brazing up there so that I can uh, put that door on when I get a chance. Uh, I can flow my nitrogen through that that port I've got to add. So I'll, uh, I'll get some video up there once I uh, get up on that end of it. Okay, so here we are upstairs. Of course, there's where we come up through the floor. And I think what I'll do, you know, you've got your blower down here, you gotta have access to. I'll probably just 90 out of this and come straight over and, and uh, down. I was gonna use one of these TXB 90s because it has the port on it already. And what I may do is just, uh, you know, get my height right, which I measured it, and, but I, I chickened out at the last minute and made it a little longer. So I'll have to trim it off a little bit, but I will, uh, what I'll do is cut this to the right height and swedge the pipe I just stuck up through the floor, stick this down in it. That way that uh, pressure switch will be pointing downward, be less likely for somebody to, you know, if it was sticking out this way, somebody might, you know, grab a hold of it or something, pull down on it or push down on it and possibly break it. So I'll just put it in here like this. Of course, again, there's gonna be a door in front of this. so. Somebody would really, really have to want to get in here and do some damage to do it. So this thing's only five eighths. <laughs> this air handler is brand new and it was built in 2016. That's, of course, I hadn't had it quite that long. It was a scratch and dent model. See the dent? But I had the old uh, tape had pretty much dry rotted, but I like to never got the rubber plug out. I was afraid it was going to break off in there. But when I did finally get it to come loose, it had still had nitrogen in it, so it was uh, it was still holding charge, so that was good. I doubt I could get my uh, get them to swap me right now, huh? But at any rate, I'll get this uh, figured out, swedge up this end of it, and uh, start fitting up some copper. What I may do on this guy, you can see it's five eighths here. I've got a, uh, a five eighths by three quarter coupling that I could put over a street street L, and this thing is so long, I may just. Uh, trim it off, cut that bell off, and braze my 5 eighths right onto that, save a piece of pipe. Otherwise, I'd have to put a little short piece of 5 eighths, and it starts pushing me out. You know, it wouldn't be into the door, but it would be out quite a ways. So I think this might be my best thing to do. The other thing I could do, I've got a 5 eighths street L. I could put it in and then put a short piece of 5 eighths, but there's plenty of room there. Maybe that sticks out further than most. <laughs> our handlers do now. So if I go ahead and just trim that off of there, I can just braze her up right there. Okay, maybe a new plan. This is five, or it's five eight street L, of course we'll go in there and it's way back behind the wall when you do that. So, and of course, when you have the bell end on the five eights that the five eights normally goes up in, it turns out being about the same size as a piece of three quarter pipe. So I'm just gonna take my, my swedging tool and swedge out a piece of three quarter to a you know socket that'll take this as a mail, clean this up, braze it together, and have one less fitting and potential leak place. So that'll uh, 
that'll work good. I'll get started fitting this up and then we'll get some nitrogen on it and get to work. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this sledge tool, put it in this copper and we're gonna go slow cause we don't wanna get too big. We want this to be a good snug fit when we get done. So I'll get started on it and we'll see how we do. I'm gonna start on this long piece of scrap so that if I do get too big, I can just cut it off and go again. So in trying to get you a little video of my swedging, <laughs> I got a little too big. So we'll cut it off and try again. There we go. Um, actually, I, I knew I'd messed up when I was trying to film it because I hit the stop on that thing and I knew I had made it you know, go all the way like it would for a three quarter inch pipe. And this is just a little bit smaller. So I just went a little slower, had to do it twice, but now we've got us a nice tight fit and it'll take a brace, you know, without running over into the pipe. Okay, this is kind of what I have in mind. We got our little street L5.8 there going into that three quarter, which goes into that bell that's already on that fitting. There's a port. And then of course I swedged up my line going under the house. This is the pressure switch that's going to be going on right here. Um, I think it's a cuts out at 550 and back in at 425 PSI. It's got to be connected to that zoning control. So the zoning control again will know to cut the outdoor heat pump off if, if you somehow choke down the air too far. Uh, it actually, these two wires will connect to one of these two conductor wires down here, but I'm going to, uh, uh, this is what I'm going to do, and you all can tell me if you think I'm wrong. I'm going to go down and take the cap off the other end of this line that's under the house. I'm going to leave this plug in the coil for now. I'm going to hook my nitrogen right here. I don't have a core in it yet. I'll hook my nitrogen to there, and I'll flow nitrogen. It'll go out the other end down there because it can, and I'll braise up this joint. And then I'll stop the nitrogen I'll pop the plug here. I'll go downstairs and put a cap on the end of this line and I'm gonna flow nitrogen again and it's gonna go this way, and come out here. And I'll braise this line and this line. And then I think I'll wait on this one and stick me a piece of Rubitex, bunch it up on here. I'll have to pull this one up and there'll be a seam in it right here where I have to put this pressure switch in. But after I bunch that Rubitex up on here, I'll, I'll braise this one last. Again, nitrogen will be coming out right here. And then I can just uh, route my 3 8 line up through here and do the same thing with it. I've got my dryer down there that came with the outdoor unit. The outdoor unit's still sitting at the shop. Um, typically on this type of unit, I would put it in here. Again, It's this is actually a TXV in here. The outdoor unit has an electronic valve. So I might just put my filter out there. I'd probably rather protect it than this one. This one's a lot easier to change. <laughs> so I'll make the, I'll make my mind up when I get to it. I don't want to put this dryer in this line today and then, you know, not go ahead and put the outdoor unit in. And I doubt I'll have time to do that because I still have to go to the shop and unbury it <laughs> to get it out of there. I'd probably take a half a day. So I'm going to get the nitrogen hooked up, go down, pull that cap off and uh, see how we do. Okay. Got this line heading over toward that hole in the wall. What we'll do, we'll pull this cap off and let the nitrogen come out down here. But you know, I was just thinking on the way down here, you always getting those fights on Facebook groups about whether the dryer goes inside or outside. And everybody says, you gotta put it inside close to the metering device. But some of these people don't have heat pumps maybe, but we got metering devices at both ends. So what I probably should do just take some of my scrap copper and run that 3 eighths down about halfway through here and put the dryer under here. <laughs> Tell them I put it halfway. Okay, I plugged the other end of that line and I've got good nitrogen flowing out right here right now. So what I may do, it'll be a little easier on me, I think. Let's go ahead and braise up this entire 90 back here since we'll have to get it hot anyway. And then braise this one last. That'll give me a place to slip on some Rubitex without having to slit it and you know, you only have to scratch it up about that far. So let's go that route. I think we're getting plenty of nitrogen through it. Don't forget to uh, wrap this line with a wet rag cause there's a TXD bulb already 
clamp to it up in there so you got to keep it cool so now that's done that's done this is our last joint i will uh separate this put a cap on this and slip the rubitex up on it and clamp it down with my cutters we'll braise this last line and then we can foam it up pulled her apart stuck a cap back over this end that'll keep all that powder from getting up in your pipe and we'll slip this on well she's all brazed in so we can pull that over there and when I go under the floor, I'll actually help work that one up from underneath because I'm going to, uh, well, I guess I have to go. Yeah, I've got to go run that 3 8 copper up through here. I think I've got a, a piece on the truck long enough to get pretty far under there. So I'll go ahead and if I can get that stuck in here, that'll be the last braze on the inside here. Okay, I got her stuck up through there and bent, but I forgot to take the cap off the end of this so i can't put it on here yet or it'll blow one or the other caps off and it would probably be the big one instead of the little one on my luck so i'm gonna go on down and pull the cap off this little line we'll stick her in there and make that braze joint and i may go ahead and just put that pressure switch on it because uh, i can use the outdoor unit to make the rest of my connections and uh, i'd like to have it on there when i pressure test i'm gonna we'll put a valve core in it too just in case it ever goes bad and i need to change it Okay, got us a valve core. I'm just gonna document it so I'll I'll know it one of these days when I I get older and more forgetful. <laughs> and I need to replace that switch and I'll be like, did I put a valve core in that or not? So now we'll know. Okay, I used the backup wrench and put about three ugga duggas on it. So hopefully that's not gonna leak. And I can about still make out what, what switch what switch number it is when I need to replace it someday. And since this seam is so close to the corner there, the stuff won't really bend around it. So what I do is just slit it and roll it up to where you can, you know, get it over here on the other side and tape it. And that way you can uh, get you a nice clean corner over there. So inside should be done as far as the refrigeration goes. I probably ought to go ahead and throw that drain in there, see if I can work out a way to uh, get it down through the same hole. If not, I can drill another one over there to see what we can do. Okay, on a normal system, I would just put a float switch in like this, the trap underneath it, head over and down. Um, and that would work great. And of course, you could clean the trap out easy if anything, you know, if you needed to clean it out by pulling the switch out. But on a downdraft like this or a downflow, you get a lot of this stuff down here in the way of probably getting your blower out. So what I think I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna still put my switch this way because there's just not room to do this without it getting out into the door opening. So I'm still gonna put my switch in normal, but I'm going to come out of it with a 90 right out the bottom. And I'm going to 90 over. And then I'm gonna put me a clean out T right there with a cap on it. Just, you know, stuck in the hole. And then this is gonna go down and underneath the floor. And I've got a 90 once I get under the floor to head down beside my center beam and go to the outside wall. So instead of putting a 90 down there, I'll use this trap and that'll make my turn for me. But what it'll really do, we all know that the trap is usually what stops up first on one of these systems because everything kind of lays in there, and, you know, gunks up. But if you, have a system like this and you have your trap down what three foot or so then if it does clog up the water has to back up in this standpipe all the way up here before it ever trips your switch and chances are by the time you get that much of a water column on top of that trap it's going to go ahead and flush itself out anyway so i think i'm going to go that route and keep this line up as high as i can to make blower access easier Okay, and of course that gives us a couple more wires to add to all these down here. But the only thing that uh, you have to worry about on this clean out is that it's above the float switch. Uh, that's just a piece of pipe that was left over stuck in there right now. I'll have to, uh, put, like I say, just pressure fit a cap down on top of it. Uh, something I can take off if I ever wanted to. But that should drain pretty good. One thing to be aware of, depending on the humidity in your house and how much 
you know, water is actually running through this line, it could sweat. And I started to go ahead and put a piece of Rubitex on it, but I thought I'd rather not have it if it don't sweat, because it'll just make it a little bigger. Uh, and you can always cut a piece and add it on there, or even put a piece of the uh, normal water line insulation that's already split. Some of that's, you know, at Lowe's, they've got it split, and it's got a piece of tape you can pull off and stick it back together. So that's, that's in there now. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go underneath and run that out tonight, today or not. I'm about tired of being under the house after all them water lines. I may uh, call it an early Sunday and uh, see if I can come back, you know, maybe one day this week, possibly bring that outdoor unit with me and go ahead and get it in here and uh, start hooking up all this stuff. And I said this thing was a 16. That's actually the plant it was built in. It's a 15. So this thing's darn near 10 years old. <laughs> I don't guess they'll honor my warranty on it when I go to register it, huh? Oh. Well, look what I found at the shop buried. It did have a, a box over it, so it's not very dusty. It is a 2018. There's the Energy Star Energy Guide rating on it. Uh, the old unit used to sit right here. It had one of those hollow looking concrete pads. Uh, I've already took it up. Oh, I hadn't moved it very far, but I took it up. We will have to try to get this pad leveled up. And got some little trees trying to grow. Need something to dig with. Got a shovel and a tamper just sitting here waiting. I'll be right back. Didn't know if I had my keys with me, but let's use this shovel. About 40 degrees here this morning. There is part of the old deck. I think that's the rest of it on that dump trailer. I've got to get it hauled to the dump, but it's been so wet. I was afraid I'd get stuck. Okay, that looks better. I'll, uh, I'm still gonna use a shovel, of course, and level this pad up. I didn't use that thing to level a pad. <laughs> I went ahead and got on that thing because I knew I was gonna have to move that pile of concrete eventually. And you do not want me on that thing next to a brand new heat pump. Okay, we got the pad down there and leveled up. Of course, I had to dig it in at the back. It's hard as a brick here. I put maybe a half inch or so of dirt under this end, but I tamped it good. And I'm putting adjustable pump ups under it. If it ever does move a little, I can fix it. So I'm gonna back this thing up and slide that big beast off of here. Okay guys, we got the uh, three quarter inch line coming out. We got some nitrogen going through it. Of course, it's still separated on the inside there in the crawl space. I'll put it together there after I do this joint. So let's get this one brazed up. Okay, guys, that big one's in, little one's next. And you don't know how much I want to carry this thing under the house and use it where I put my two three-eighths lines together just to say I put it in the middle. But, you know, that would be fine. I would only do it if it was my house like this is. However, this may not always be my house. And, I wouldn't want to leave that under there for some unsuspecting tech, you know, it comes out and changes this unit out to not know it's there and, uh, you know, possibly damage equipment because of it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it right out here. And again, this, I said this was a electronic expansion valve. I just now look down in it. It is not, it's just a standard expansion valve. Uh, but again, I'm going to be running this thing on heat at least for the next month. So that will uh, be close to the metering device in question. Okay, we're finished out here, so I'll uh, leave that nitrogen flowing through the little line and go on inside and put it together. Well, she's held 250 pounds of pressure for about the last hour. I've been in there tidying up my water lines. I'm going to, uh, I think tonight, I'm just going to uh, take my gauges off and leave that pressure on it. And then if I get to come back out here, I've still got to hook all those uh, thermostat control wires up. I actually got to hook up a whip here too. It's not even connected into the back of that box yet. It's in the house, under the house. So uh, 
I'm going to just leave it at this tonight. And uh, next chance I get, I'll be out here hopefully pulling a vacuum and wiring it up. I got the old field piece running on her. Here is the, here's the guts. Just pulled out my thermostat connection here and I've had this thing a long time and like I say, I, I did actually, uh, I was ready to put it in at my house back in 2018. So I had actually uh, replaced a, a dented panel and done some things. So they may have given me a connector, but I couldn't even tell you where it is now, but it looks like there's actually six wires on this connector but the only four I would use for a communicating system is the uh, red, black, white, and blue because I traced them up to this board up here and we can see we have a, uh, an I plus and an I minus and then a C and an R. So I think that's the ones I'm gonna end up using. I'll confirm that on the instruction manual which I'll probably have to get off <laughs> offline. But, uh, I will uh, let this vacuum pull for a little bit and I'll start running some uh, four conductor thermostat work. I put the gauge on and uh, went underneath and stuck enough thermostat wire through to reach the connector and then some. And so I came back out and checked. I turned the valve to gauge off and uh, it was down to 167 with the pump connected. So I, I turned the valve off and uh, it's down to what about 215 with the pump not running and the valve off. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I've still got a lot of work to do. Uh, this has never had oil in it, so you can't pull too good of a vacuum on it. So I'm going to go ahead and let the pump run while I'm connecting up all these uh, thermostat wires. And also I looked in the book on this. Uh, apparently there's supposed to be a connector stuck in here that has screw terminal connectors that you put the wires in and tighten down a little you know flathead screw much like a thermostat connector and i i really can't see me unplugging that i mean it wouldn't have took up much space i thought maybe it had a pigtail or something but it didn't it actually had just a little um, female that plugged in there and had screw terminals on it so i'm guessing they just left it out at the factory but again the uh board up here is labeled r C and I plus and I minus, and that's exactly the same designations that's on the thermostat terminal strips and the uh, indoor unit terminal strips. So I'll just cut off these wires and make a good a good connection with wire nuts. They warn you about you know making connections with this communicating type stuff, but as long as you get a good connection, it'll work. Okay, here is the main thermostat. And you can see they've actually changed designations here. They got a 12 volt plus A, B, and 12 volt minus. So I've got those hooked up. I just, I used red and blue for the plus and minus and on the 12 volt. And then I used green for A and uh, white for B. And I'll go look at the uh, next piece and see if those designations make sense. Also put a little caulk in the hole there. Here is our next piece in this line. This is the part that connects it to the Wi-Fi, I guess. And as you can see, you have the plus A, B, minus on one side on the right there, and you have a the R and then the I plus, I minus, and the C on the left. So I guess they did that in order to keep from confusing the uh, wires, you know, make sure you hook the thermostat to the correct side of this Wi-Fi box and the unit to the other side. So. I'll go ahead and uh, go mount this guy on the wall in the closet. So this is the area in the closet where this little guy's gonna live. And uh, you can see I've got my two wires already roughed in there. <clears throat> I would like to hope that this wire that I put a T on runs over there to the thermostat location and that this one runs right down here to the bottom of the wall. Comes out right there. But I'm just going to make sure I've got that thermostat base mounted in there. So what I've done, I just stuck a wire nut down on top of the red and the uh, white wire after I had them stripped. It's not really twisted. It's just holding them together. And I will go into the other room with an ohm meter 
and make sure that the red and the white are connected right now. Nothing else should be connected. So if I'm on the wrong wire, it should be open. Okay, so we got our meter. It's hard to do one-handed. And you can see if I put them together, uh, we get a, a beep. So we had the white, the white and the red, and there's our beep. If we do the blue and the red, we got open. So we know that the white and the red are connected. And we can be sure that's our thermostat wire and go ahead with the wiring. Okay, we got that little guy mounted. There's a little cover plate that goes here. Uh, unfortunately, the wires come in from outside. So I'll just stick a little caulk around that hole eventually. Over here in my zone controller board, uh, they call it a damper control, I think. I have a T2, although the T and the two are backwards from one to another. So I'm going to assume this is going to my master bedroom. And what we'd be doing is hooking that up to like zone two slash six, zone three, seven, or zone four. I only have two zones, so it'll be connecting right here. And if you notice there, the designations are power, D plus, D minus, and C. Let's go see what's on the thermostat base. Okay, it has the same thing. It has a D plus and a D minus, plus your power in common. So I'll make this connection in here, and then we'll start wiring up that uh, damper control panel. Okay, so and what happens is the white lands on the minus. Of course, power in common, I'm going to leave red and blue everywhere. So as long as I remember that the white wire goes on the minus side, uh, the green will, only place it will have to go is on the plus side. So I've stuck a little caulk around that opening in the wall and we'll let that be drying while we're going over here and hooking up the zone panel. Okay, so that bedroom thermostat just comes in here and connects to the zone two on the thermostat board, on the zoning board. Uh, I've got two more wires up top here. I've got a six, and a four, and they're just two conductor. So just looking here, I can see on this board, we've got a discharge air temperature sensor, which we have down there. And then this guy right here is for a pressure switch. And both of those are down here in the floor below us here. So I'm gonna go down and make sure I've got a six and a four and see which one I need to hook to which up here. Uh, some of the wires may be longer or something. So I'll just pick the best one and and make it the discharge air temperature, and then the other one will wind up being the pressure switch by default. Okay, here are number six and number four down here, and they're basically the same length. Uh, one of them gets to hook to these two wires coming off of that discharge sensor that's stuck into the supply duct, and the other two get connected to our pressure switch uh, that we put on the vapor line, which will turn it off in times of heat if you don't have enough airflow across the indoor coil. So it don't matter which one of these I use, I'm just gonna pick one and go with it. And uh, these on this end down here, they'll just get wire nutted together. I could probably solder them and heat shrink it, but right now we're gonna wire nut them together. And I'll just try to, uh, I don't know where I'm gonna tuck everything in here. Uh, I may try to hide it over here behind the line set. I'll see what I can do and make it look as neat as I can. Okay, number four is still up here because I used number six for the pressure switch and I didn't want to cut them both off because <laughs> I'd forget and get them backwards. So I took number six and stripped it back and got it ready to go into the pressure switch connector there. It used to have this jumper. I guess in case you were putting this zone panel on a non-heat pump system, you wouldn't have to use the pressure switch. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and put these two wires in and I did check them and make sure that they were closed as that pressure switch should be because there's less than uh, 500 plus PSI in the line. Uh, so I'll hook that one up and then I can just go ahead and jump up here and put number four right on the uh, discharge air temperature connector right above it. Okay, so that last one is the discharge temperature sensor. That was that number four, I believe. And 
you can see I put red to red, but truly polarity doesn't matter on either one of these last two connections. Uh, this is just basically a thermistor, so it's just gonna send resistance to tell it what the air temperature is. And then this guy over here is just a switch. It's either on or off. So all it knows is are these two wires touching or not? So again, polarity doesn't matter on these two guys. Uh, the next one, it might matter because this one is down at the bottom of that zone controller. It's a two conductor wire. And I believe it is to take power up there and it hooks to a terminal called transformer. So uh, we will have to make sure that the transformers are phased correctly. I may just use the, the transformer that's in this unit. Uh, the last one I did, I put a separate transformer on the dampers but they didn't seem to pull any, you know, watts at all, really. So I may go ahead and try it with just one transformer and save a little money on operating cost. Okay, you can see the damper transformer has an R and a C on it, so we need to keep our polarity correct there. So we'll just use the red and the white, red being uh, R. Uh, I just noticed this little switch here too. It's got, it's a little jumper like you'd have on a defrost board. You got damper transformer or system transformer. So it may be that I don't need this wire connected at this time unless I'm going to put a separate transformer on. The jumper's down here on system transformer. So I guess in reality, it could bring its R and C up with the thermostat wire coming from the, uh, from the main thermostat or from the indoor unit here. So, uh, I'll just, uh, of course, I, I wanted to run it anyway because I may end up having to put a damper transformer on it if the dampers and everything else in the system pulls too many uh, watts for the transformer that's currently in the system. But for now, I may just leave that on system, trans uh, system transformer and not even connect this and see if it needs it or not. Uh, the only three wires left up here, this one says T1, which that should be coming from over here at this box. And what that should do, no, I'm lying to you. The reason I'm lying to you is originally, see these two terminal strips in this board? You got one that says thermostat and one that says indoor unit. Well, the way they designed this thing was to run your, you know, thermostat to this one and then jump here to your indoor unit. And then your indoor unit has a place to go to the outdoor unit but they were having trouble with communication. And what they narrowed it down to was they didn't need this transform or this thermostat coming up here. So what they tell you to do is not hook this up at all, run a wire down to the indoor unit and splice everything, the thermostat and this cable here down at the indoor unit circuit board. And that took away the problems. I noticed the newer boards, this is a 2016 board but I noticed that the newer boards have eliminated this connector altogether. So basically what this is, this will just be our, our red, our plus and minus and our common, and this will go down to the indoor unit board and we'll either nut it together with you know little jumper wires or we'll probably just try to put both, both sets from this thing and this thing under one set of screws down on the indoor unit. Uh, the last two one little wires are two conductors. They say one and two, and these are my dampers down in the crawl space. So I have damper one here and damper two here. So they'll just connect here. Those dampers are normally open. So we will connect them to the common and the normally open, and that way the, the device knows to send power to them whenever it needs to close off uh, whichever zone is not supposed to get air. That guy's completely connected up and it's time to do these down here, but I haven't stuck up the wire from the outdoor unit yet. I just uh, stuck it out through to the outdoor unit and ran it through the crawl space. So before I even open this up and uh, start hooking that up, I'm gonna go ahead and go down and I'll hook up the two dampers in the crawl space, hook up the outdoor unit and, and stick the outdoor unit wire up through this hole so we can get it up into the air handler. It's pulling down there pretty good. Let's valve her off and see where we land. What I'll do is leave this pump off for a while. Uh, 
while we do some of this other work and make sure it doesn't climb up. Uh, I need to get some strippers for out here. I think I'm just going to uh, cut all of these off. I'll nut off the uh, yellow and orange independently and then I'll just connect red to red. Black will be green, white will be white, and blue will be blue. And we just won't have a connector. You know, it's time to slow down on the eating when you're, you get so chunky your butt pushes your strippers out of your back pocket when you're walking. Okay, we just nutted off the yellow and orange like we said. The reason we know, you know, we know blue and, and uh, red is correct blue and red but you also see that the white is on the minus if it'll focus and so that's what we were using white on the inside so that just leaves the green and it gets whatever color is left which happens to be black and this connector is no more we're holding on 82 so i'd say we've got a good tight system i'll probably uh go ahead and i don't know probably don't need to run it anymore i may go ahead and turn it loose while i'm out here and then uh, go underneath and hook up the rest of the wiring. We still got to put the high voltage on it. Uh, but I'm going to have to add some refrigerant uh, because of the uh, line set length. But I would rather do that when it was running and I can just weigh it in rather than taking a chance on introducing some air in by trying to put it in the empty line set right now. Well, here is the Ken 2 wire they've got going out to the outdoor, or did have going out to the outdoor unit. It's a lot longer than it used to be because I moved the panel. So it's got that piece of car flex existing to sleeve it down through to keep it off the block. So I'm not gonna try to stick this whole thing out through there. I'm just going to uh, cut it off about right there. And is the breaker off? I don't know. We'll find out. It will be in a minute, one way or another. <laughs> Can I get any duller pliers? There we go. Must have been off. I didn't you see no sparks. So we'll cram that down through there and we can go outside and uh, strip it back and hook it into the disconnect box. I looked on the truck. I used the last new disconnect I had on there on that water heater. So I'll leave this one for now. Might leave it forever. Okay, guys, it's time for the inside. Here was our lice wire coming up from underneath the house, which goes out to the outdoor unit. And all the connections are gonna be made on this terminal strip right over here. Uh, I've gotta pull this, I've got a conventional, what, Sensi thermostat on it now, just running some electric heat. But I turned this breaker off and pulled the door off. And with these two lugs on top still being hot, uh, I was concerned not about me touching them, but about me stripping off a little wire and somehow flopping over there and hitting it since we got that expensive circuitry already hooked to it outside. And those little big blue boxes up there, we, we don't want to, uh, you know, send any high voltage to them. So I went ahead and went out in the garage and turned off the, the breaker coming in here so we can be safe rather than sorry. So I'm, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this old thermostat wire and, uh, and then we'll try to get these wires routed up in there and get land them on their, you know, right lugs. We should have a, oh, up on top there, we have a thermostat. It's upside down and an outdoor unit. So basically we're going to take our wire coming from that box there and the wire coming from that box there and we're gonna put them both under the thermostat screws. We're gonna put two wires under each screw there if they'll fit, and I think they do. And then the outdoor unit, it'll just have the four wires going out there. And the only other wire I have coming down here right now was for 24 volts for the um, uh, damper transformer. And I'm not going to hook it up currently. We're gonna see, it should work without it, with that jumper that's up there. And uh, we'll just leave it at that. If we need 24 volts on it, we can probably steal it right over here off of this conventional terminal strip that we won't be using. Okay guys, both of those uh, zone control board and the control the main thermostat both fit underneath those screws, no problem. So I ran them in there first so I wouldn't get them mixed up. And then here is the outdoor unit ready to go. I'm gonna stick it in, put it in here I've got to go back and look at my notes. I'm pretty sure 
if you want to put a float switch on it, on this series unit, you had to break the, the red wire going out to the outdoor unit and that gave you an error code, which then you have to know that, that you better check your float switch first. So I'm gonna double check that and get that float switch ran up in there and connect it at the same time. Uh, and that way I'll be done. The newer boards have a place for the float switch. And it seems like even some of the, the boards I put in back in the day at my other house had the uh, place to put it, but they didn't want you to use it because there was some issue with it. Okay, so we got outdoor unit hooked up here. The weird looking red here is actually one of these float switches. I put one down in that pan and then if it's good, it comes back up and goes to this black wire, which is this float switch. And if it's good, it'll actually go to the red wire going to the outdoor unit. So that should make the outdoor unit come on as long as both these switches are closed. Uh, I may want to jump down and glue that trap on underneath and put some water in it just to, just in case this fan tries to flutter this switch. Sometimes if it pulls backwards through the pipe, it can do that. So it's always a good idea to prime your trap first. And are we missing? Seems like there was, ooh, ooh, ooh. We haven't, uh, I hooked up the dampers up there, but we haven't hooked them up under the floor. So when we go under and put that trap on, we'll, We'll hook up the two dampers and uh, it'll be ready to try out. Okay, we have a trap, which I can pour some water in. I just went ahead and glued the coupling on this end because I gotta take it over and go out that wall. And then we have damper number one connected and damper number two connected. So it should be time to fire everything up. I mean, it should be time once we hook up the high voltage out here to the outdoor unit. <laughs> okay, guys, we got power hooked up. This will get a clamp back to the wall, but not right now. I'm going to go in and uh, turn the breaker on and just confirm I've got uh, 240, 250 volts right here before I uh, put the cover on. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on so that... When I turn this thing on, I won't have to undo the power to it because I think if you undo the power to the outdoor unit, sometimes it gives you an error code on the indoor unit. And uh, we'll take our meter and check these fuses uh, too right quick. 252 volts. Let's go inside and turn everything in there on. Okay, I've snapped the zone control for the master bedroom end of the house on in here. And we've got the big one in here. It's got a sticker on it. It's got all kind of writing. We'll try to get that off of there. Telling you how to put it on without breaking it, I guess. Okay, now we'll go turn and power up the unit. It's drawing us pictures now, like with an Etch-a-Sketch. Fire is terrible. Right? <laughs> Don't matter where I go, I got a window in the way. I'm gonna connect the app and see if I can do a lot of this stuff uh, with my phone instead of having to punch on the uh, thermostat. We got our first message. It says the zoning control has a power problem. So maybe we are overdoing that uh, transformer in the system. Uh, I'm gonna look and see what that code says and then we'll get back with it. Well, here is our message. It says to check the transformer and connections and all of that and replace transformer. So. Apparently, I'm going to have to power up that little wire we didn't power up, so I'm going to go in there and uh, hook that up, and we'll try again. It's just now coming on. I couldn't get out here quick enough to catch it. Oh, I've got just the one zone on heat. That thing that will tell me what it's doing, what heat. Fan, four, two, one. A six zero H six six. I can't remember what all those are. It's probably running. We can go in there and look at diagnostics. I just wanted to make sure nothing was screaming out here when it came on. But she's pumping. Fan's barely turning. We'll go inside and see what we got on the control. 
Here's what the control looks like currently. We're just on the great room. Master bedroom isn't on right now. So we should be able to get into the dealer uh, advanced settings. Proceed to, to diagnostics. Deselect all. Let's just look at the heat pump right now. Ooh, let's see if it's, I don't know if the other, my old one took a while to populate. Looks like they're kind of grayed out. There we go. The heating rate's 71% right now. I have the airflow set for this zone at about uh, 600, I think. 600 and something. Liquid line is 78. Ambient temperature's 58. It's really not 58 out there, but it's... <laughs> That reading will always be a little high. Compressor's running 44 hertz. Uh, compressor current, 3.9 amps at 376 volts. Input current's 3.2. I wonder if that thing's, it's not blinking except through the camera. It's probably detecting me being here. Big brother. See what the air handler says it's doing. Six hundred and fifty CFM must be what I'm putting in here. So the indoor blower is running about twenty five percent of its power. Should be pretty good static pressure then, right? He did the seventy as well. Let's see what happens. I hear the fan ramping up. So it should be doing 650 plus. I think I had about 250 on the bedroom part. So let's go look and see what it's doing. I can't remember what numbers I put in there. Let's check out the air handler first. Now let's just do them all. See if that heating rate goes up. Yep, 100%. It's giving it all the beans now. Our handler's on 800. Must be its maximum. I think that's the maximum I have it set for. I don't think the zoning control's got a whole lot. It can tell anything about, does it? Damper's 100% open. That's something, that's something we can check, make sure they're actually uh, closing the damper. Discharge air is 84 degrees right now, it says. I have both zones on, and of course I've got the electric heat locked out, so our blower unit is pulling 1.8 amps. See what the outside heat pump is pulling, if we can get in here. 5.5 uh, five amps. So for six or seven amps, we're running 100%. Okay hey guys, she's basically in timeout right now where I went in and changed some settings. I found the setting on the discharge temperature. It's got a discharge temperature setting, uh, you know, the, the discharge temperature that you would like to see for electric heat or heat pump heating. And it was set pretty low, uh, like 90, 95. So I went ahead and cranked them both up to 105. Might as well let that heat pump do all it will do. Uh, when it when it you know has the ability to do that so um, once it restarts here i want to it should ramp on up i noticed that even though it's 66 degrees in here and set on 70 even when i had both zones on it was not uh, running 100 percent outside and that's because that uh, temperature discharge temperature sensor was saying hey we're getting a little warm back off so we turned it up to make it make it heat good the um uh, the thing we f I found with that damper control when it, when it wasn't working correctly, there was a red light on it that said it was basically uh, off. And I was going to add a new transfer, a, a second transformer down there. And I went out to the truck and got one and everything. But when I pulled the control board out where I could see the existing transformer, it was a uh, 70 KA, a KVA transformer. So 
I felt like that was big enough, so I just stuck the two wires that we had previously put on up there. I went ahead and connected them inside the air handler to the uh, RNC on the conventional thermostat strip, and that allowed it to uh, start working. I moved that jumper over to say, you know, use this uh, second transformer. I just tricked it into thinking it had one, and everything's working great so far. So. She's coming back on right now. The ambient lockout again is that that's for the electric heat. Uh, I turned it on and turned it down to uh, 20 degrees, I believe. So it shouldn't turn the electric heat on unless it's 20 degrees outside. Yeah, we're getting some discharge temperature now. It's a creeping on up there. So before it was actually throttling the heat pump or turning off the electric heat, you know, when it was on in order to keep that discharge air temperature around 90 degrees. It's up to 98.8 on the discharge now. These things are supposed to have a, a badge, either Armstrong Air or Air Ease. And on this particular communicating unit, it was supposed to say Armstrong Air Pro or Air Ease Pro, but it doesn't have anything on it, neither does the outdoor unit. But I went out to the van and I still had one of these see the little holes are made just to line it up so I'll stick that on there just to cover up those ugly holes feels like old times okay I'm probably gonna go ahead and put the cover on this thing take my gauges off um, see what we got f700 that's 700 rpm the fa outdoor fans turning a is 58 that's the ambient temperature out here uh, heat 100% that's, it means the inverter is running pretty much wide open. And the fan at 700 RPM again. So Everything seems to be doing about right. We'll, uh, we'll check it on AC. Like I said, I haven't added any charge to it. I'd rather do that when I you know, can do it in air conditioning mode. But I'll just measure the line set and probably weigh in you know, what it's supposed to have. The TXV should take care of it. But it seems to be doing well. I'm gonna go ahead and unhook these gauges and uh, put this cover on and let it eat. Okay, I was getting ready to leave and the great room zone just satisfied. So it, it backed off the compressor down to 40% because it's only on the little zone in the back now. But as you can see that discharge air temperature is 105.4. So it's gonna regulate it and try to keep that 105 degrees just off of the heat pump. Shouldn't be no heat strips on. Zero electric heat sections on. Um, the um, thing should tell you, this is, of course, this is satisfied, so it's not doing anything. This one says heating, and then it says ambient lockout, meaning that it won't cut on the electric heat. So it should pop that 65 degree room up to 69 pretty quick with a 105 degree air. Calling for quite a bit of rain tonight. So I ran by here, I'm gonna throw some pine bark mulch down around this thing just to keep mud from splattering up on it but she's running right now and at a real low capacity fans barely turning i didn't even know it was on until i come around the corner i think i'm gonna like it well i gave her a little mulch to keep the mud off of her also gave her a name <laughs> it ain't right but it's on there